So the U.S. military, um, they are actually working on augmented reality and VR right now. Again, it's so funny because the, the military contacted me and asked if I would help them. And I'm reluctant to do that because I like talking about everything. <laughs> And it would be top secret, whatever they told me. So it's like, I don't know. We are able to perfect an in and output system for the brain where you can have second life being driven directly from your brain. Second life, second life being the avatar community online. that. Uh, yes. so, so, your, so your thoughts are moving you through a computer and those sensations are coming back directly into your brain and your body is just sitting there. This is the matrix, right? You know, so as my son came in, he, when, he, when he heard one of the early reports on what we did, he said, Dad, you are the matrix. You know, so. <laughs> because of my responsibilities in surveillance as a otherwise normal security specialist, uh, I would show this technology at work. And it was through the perspective, of course, of the camera. And it is absolutely remarkable. It's just like a first-person, you know, video game or something where you, you see right through the eyes of the individual. This... This isn't real. What is real? How do you define real? If you're talking about what you can feel, what you can smell, can taste and see, then real is simply electrical signals interpreted by your brain. If we have algorithms that stimulate the right things and give it the right data, they could reprogram you in a way without you even knowing it. And we call it hallucinating, right? But these would be controlled uh, hallucinations run by algorithms. So every th you think you're in control of your own will but it's actually some evil AI or evil people controlling everything we do and we're more like zombies, you know? Like we think we're free and we're not actually free. They are manipulating your brain to be able to feel sensation in other parts of your body. And other people, and people will interpret that as a shock, let's say, to your leg. Um, it feels as though someone's shooting you with energy or a frequency or a spark or electricity in your leg but there's not actually anything being shot at your leg. What's happening is they are manipulating your brain and then it is causing you within the part of the brain that, that deals with touch and sense and feel, it is causing you to perceive that someone is shocking you in your leg when that's not actually going on. It's just generating that feeling in your mind. We call it no touch torture and so the assumption for most human beings, well, if I don't see blood or mutilation, it can't be that bad. Well, what the brain perceives is far worse than that. In fact, the pains are amplified, sensitized, and are, ex you know, extremely vulnerable to these uh, these circuits being stimulated. Torture itself, it's a high stress level. So yeah. one of the objectives of torture is to keep them at maximum pain in the high stress levels possible. That's how it builds a model, a cognitive model, a copycat parallel twin personality of the victim's brain is using physical and psychological trauma to map out and reverse engineer the sensory and neural pathways of the victim's brain and central nervous system. It's happening, and I'm sitting here trying to read my Bible, and it's happening every single day. I try to read my Bible. This is how torture mind control works. It's all achieved remote by way of energy. I can't stop it. There's nothing I can do to stop it. All I can do is try to say, look, it's happening, it's happening, it's happening and it breaks my heart to know what's being done to them by some real, sick, evil, out of control people who have taken their positions of power and authority and taken advantage of it. They have violated the trust of the American people. They have violated the trust of the stockholders in their companies. They have violated the trust of their co-workers. They violated the trust of their employees. They violated the trust of their family and their friends. They violated the trust of their children. And they violated the trust of all Americans everywhere and indeed all human beings all over the planet. They have violated that trust by using their positions of power to conceal themselves from scrutiny and then use that veil of secrecy to launch what amounts to an attack on a non-violent American population who are just trying to live their lives and make a living and be happy, love their friends and family and do the best they can. And it is the complicity 
of the military, the intelligence agencies, the social workers, private security uh, contractors, major American corporations, local and state police that is allowing this to happen. And it's a goddamn disgrace. You are the people. We are the people in my industry who are supposed to be protecting the American people, who are supposed to be serving the American people, who are supposed to be preserving our way of life and protecting the Constitution so that our children do not grow up in a hell on earth, so that horrible, evil people do not get control of this country and have the ability to harm our loved ones, our friends, and our family. And I always thought that that was a possibility for the future. I'm aware of some of the predictions of the future and the direction the country's going and and it could get really bad. Some horrible things could happen in the future. And one of the things I've been struggling with trying to wrap my mind around is that this is not about the future at all. It's happening right now in America today. And it's a goddamn disgrace. What these people have done is turned this technology into a video game and that is is exactly how they approach it they approach it as though they are playing a cross between Sid Meier's civilization on their computer and Sims where they are controlling all of civilization and also controlling people on the individual level it is infuriating it is highly highly illegal and it must be stopped now In 2003, they launched what's called the AI system, Mm -hmm. which is an intelligent supercomputer with the intelligence of a human being, Mm. in other words, a smart human being, but able to think 10 trillion times faster with the access to all known knowledge and history and a complete access to to the internet and all of the communication pathway. The technium is this idea that it's the sum total of all of the things that humans have ever built, all of our stuff. For example, this this room would count as part of the technium. And obviously things like cell phones and cars and computers would count also. Uh, Now as humanity evolved from that furry, bug-eating dude all the way up through your shared common ancestor into where we are today, over time, we've added to this thing called the technium. And humans are peculiar in that we are not separate from the things that we build. When we first started D-Wave, there were no quantum computers like the soul. They didn't exist, but there was an understanding that was shared amongst a whole bunch of people about what the world could look like if we built this thing that we all shared. Robots, the smartest people. Artificial intelligence, AI. The idea is to port the software from the human brain. So what you've heard about AI is not what we mean by AI. What we mean by AI is a software system that can do literally anything that a human can do. Literally anything. In fact, the very nature of the research and development program that is going on in Seattle, Washington, and I think uh, by extension what's being done to TIs around the country, is very... um, is very largely geared towards the monitoring of human beings for the specific purpose of recording every aspect of human existence to monitor our thoughts and to monitor our emotions and our feelings to inform computer software that is used on robots, that is used on computers themselves to make them as as human-like as possible. And obviously computers are better at things than people in lots of different ways so now imagine not only can they do everything that a human can do but they can do everything that the best human at any task could do better than them it has enormous implications but it just sounds like science fiction i don't know what's scarier the idea that an artificial intelligence can emerge it's conscious it's aware of itself and that acts to present protect itself or the idea that a person a regular person like of today mm. could be in control of essentially a god right because if this thing continues to get smarter and smarter with every week and more and more power and more and more potential more and more understanding thousands of years i mean it's just yeah this yeah. one person a per- regular person controlling that is almost more terrifying than creating mm. a new life somehow in some real sense i have the room inside my head and it's not just the room 
it's the city. And it's not just the city, it's the country. It's not just the country, I can think of the whole planet. And so you can understand how, if you had several people, for example, that you were able to do this, you can uh, through, see through their eyes in a room or on a street corner or within an office building, wherever it is, you can get total situational awareness simply by looking through their eyes and you can see through basically three, four, it's like being three or four or five different people all at the same time. Remember, going back to the sentient world simulation, peer-reviewed white paper out of Purdue University in 2006, the program went live in 2007, describing humans as a node. And every person on the planet is represented in the computer software as a node, that's a data node, and given an avatar. If our brains are connected to the internet, and if our brains are all connected, all of us connected, I could literally go into your head and see through your eyes. So all of a sudden, like for a day, like, you know, a lot of us, because you're entrepreneurs, think it would be cool to go inside Elon Musk's head for a day and walk around. Well, Elon Musk may, out, may allow people to, to get that feed and literally live through what he sees. So how, can, how is this possible? And what I want to point out is the size. So my head's small. Well, not too small. It's small. Small compared to all that. How is it possible that all that's in here? Inside those boxes is a point, a chip, upon which is happening something that has never happened in the history of the Earth. It's an engineered thing which has become a nexus point for all of these parallel realities. The shadows of all of these different universes intersect at a physical point inside of one of those boxes. You can think of it as a portal. How is it possible that all that's in here? And uh, what's come to be understood in the cutting edge of modern AI is that there is a really interesting, fascinating answer to this. And it has to do with the fact that the world has, has patterns, structure. So you may be familiar with fractals, so fractals look very complicated, but they're generated by a tiny little thing that you can write down in a few, a few numbers. And the world is like this. Images, like natural images, like what I'm looking at, have so much structure that they can be shrunk and compressed into a very tiny, what AI people call representation. If in fact the uh, algorithms that are now believed to underpin certain aspects of cognition uh, can be run on a quantum computer, the kinds of life or kinds of species that you'll get from that will be qualitatively better. What you might get is a sentience which is fundamentally different and better. In the sense that they'll learn things faster, they'll have deeper insights, they'll be able to predict future into the future uh, farther, they'll be able to take actions that have um, uh, access to understanding that we don't. That's in a sense what I'm talking about, is that if you could build an intelligence that had a deeper ability to uh, speculate about the outcome of its actions, you might be able to get something that was qualitatively smarter. You would say if you wanted to, it's harder to find intelligence, but qualitatively better to predict the future uh, more more effectively than, a, than any human biological brain can do. And it's highly, highly valuable uh, for intelligence purposes and military purposes, corporate espionage purposes. And uh, it is amazing the extent to which this technology works. It is, it's so far advanced beyond what most people are aware of, it's truly mind-blowing. And I think that's a big part of educating people is making them understand that, you know, fortunately or unfortunately, this is possible and it is being done right now today. And it's a part of our reality and we have to uh, adjust and, and figure out the best way to, to handle it. Mm -hmm.